In botanical science, traditionally, the diverse kinds of plants that we see in this world are grouped under different families. At present, botanists have recognized more than 700 families all over the world. Of these various families, Amaranthaceae is an important family. Dear students, you might be knowing about plants like beetroot, amaranth, coxcomb, goosefoot, etc. Do you know all these plants belong to a single botanical family called as amaranthaceae? We will be touching these aspects of the family amaranthaceae. Number one, taxonomy. Second, systematic position. Third, phylogeny. Fourth, diversity. Fifth, economic importance. So let us start with its taxonomy. Amaranthaceae is commonly known as amaranth family. The family was first established as a formal taxonomic category under the name Amaranthaceae by a French botanist A.L. D. Jisoo way back in 1789. This name Amaranthaceae is actually based on the scientific name of the type genus Amaranthus. Amaranthus is basically a Greek word which means unpaddic. Due to this characteristic, persistent brackets and perianth. Before discussing the taxonomy in detail, let us first of all highlight some of the diagnostic features of family Amaranthaceae. The family members are unique in being herbs to trees with anomalous secondary growth. The leaves are simple and bris like pigmented brackets are present. The perianth is uniseriate and comprised of mostly three to five tuples. Stamens are basally conate. The ovary is unilocular and shows a basal placentation. And seeds are characteristically having curved embryos. The members that belong to the family Amaranthaceae, they can show a habit of annual or biennial Herb. Examples are the various species of Amaranthus, Chinopodium, and many other taxa. The members can be also shrubs. One of the examples is Greya spinosa, or very rarely, some of the taxa that belong to Amaranthaceae, they are also trees. Example can be Charpetra densiflora. The members that belong to the family Amaranthaceae. We have here betalin pigments present, but anthocyanins are always absent. Plants, as already said, they show an anomalous secondary growth. The plants have usually concentric rings of vascular bundles, or they can have alternating concentric rings of xylem and phloem. The plastids of sieve elements, they have a peripheral ring of proteinaceous plements, but without a central protein crystal. And these are referred to as P3A type of proteins. The plants often show C4 or CAM photosynthesis. Now let us discuss its root. As it is a dicot, the in majority of the taxa we see a tap root system. After discussing root, the system. The system is usually jointed or it can be also succulent. It's often associated with swollen nodes. The nodes are unilacunar and also the stems are hairy. These hairs can be simple to branched. The leaves in Amaranthaceae, they are usually alternate, but they show a spiral arrangement or rarely we see opposite arrangement of leaves also in Amaranthaceae. Sometimes these leaves, they are aggregated at the base of the plant body. Example is Tylotus. 
the leaves are commonly extupulate that means without stipules but leaves are with petiolate or sessile condition the leaf blade is simple and the leaf margins are entire to undulate sometimes these leaf margins can be also serrate or lobed the leaves show pinnate veneation but these veins are often obscure the leaves are also succulent in some taxa example is hemicroa or in some taxa the leaves can be completely reduced now let us discuss its floral morphology starting with its inflorescence the inflorescence in amaranthaceae can be either terminal that means at the top of the plant body or axillary that means in the axils of leaves the inflorescence is usually a cyme spike or panicle but it is characteristically associated with a conspicuous a prominent bristle like persistent bracts and bracteoles or in some cases this inflorescence can be completely reduced into a solitary flower now the individual flower the flower in amaranthaceae is commonly small and greenish and is associated with fleshy to dry papery bracts and these flowers are often densely clustered together the flowers are commonly bisexual but we have some species where the flowers are unisexual in such cases where the flowers are unisexual the plants can be either monoecious or dioecious the flowers are actinomorphic and are hypogynous as we see in dicots we have the perianth distinguished into calyx and corolla that means sepals and petals but amaranthaceae is a unique case wherein we have no such distinction into calyx and corolla that's why we have here a perianth comprised of tepals tepals in amaranthaceae are 3 to 5 in number but rarely they can be 6 to 8 or completely absent these tepals are green to reddish in color they are either herbaceous or they can be fleshy they can be dry or sometimes papery these tepals are polytepalous that means they are free from each other commonly but rarely also we see these tepals can be conate that means fused at their base but characteristically in amaranthaceae these tepals are persistent sometimes they are acrescent in their fruits commonly we see this acrescent condition in tilotus the estuation in amaranthaceae is imbricate now the reproductive parts of the flower starting with androecium androecium obviously comprises of stamens which are 3 to 5 in number but in rare cases we also see 6 to 8 stamens usually the number of stamens is same as that of tepals in some cases also we have staminodes present usually their number ranges from single to 3 these stamens are antitepalous they are apostomous that means they are free from each other or in some cases we have the filaments of stamens they are slightly conate at their base also these stamens are epitepalous the anthers at the top of the filaments they are inflexed in their bud condition they are bithecous commonly we see the bithecous anthers in amaranthus or they can be even monothecous these monothecous anthers we see in gomphrena the anthers are bisporangiate they are intros and the dehiscence is longitudinal the pollen grains in amaranthaceae they are characteristically polyporate and also they are spinolose these pollen grains are always associated with pores which are scattered all over the surface of the pollen grain now the female part of the flower called as gynoecium gynoecium comprises of corpels its number ranges from 2 to 3 these corpels are fused together 
that is why we call a condition called as syncopus. The ovary is superior, it is unilocular with a single ovule or rarely many ovules. Example, the species where the ovary is with many ovules is Celosia. The ovules are either Campylotropus or Ampitropus. These are also bitagmic and crassinuciliate. The placentation in Amaranthesi is characteristically basal. The styles are 1 to 3 and the stigmas are 1 to 3. But these stigmas, they are elongate to capitate and also they are always papillate. The nectar disc or glands are often present at the ovary. Now the fruit. The fruit in Amaranthesi is an akin, utricle or it can be a circumcisile capsule. The fruit is often associated as already mentioned with the persistent bracts. The seeds are lens shaped with an embryo that is curved to spirally twisted. These seeds they lack endosperm that is why they are called as X albuminous but it is compensated by a starchy perisperm. The usually small densely clustered flowers of Amaranthesi are pollinated by either wind or by various types of insects. Both selfing as well as outcrossing may occur in Amaranthesi. Fruit dispersal. The small dry fruits or seeds which are associated with acrescent and hairy perianth. These fruits or seeds are usually dispersed by either wind or by water. A few species they form a bar like inflorescence that are externally transported by animals. In taxa like Amaranthus, Celosia, the small seeds they tend to fall from the parent plant but germinate only when the site is again disturbed. Many seeds are accidentally eaten and thus dispersed by browsing animals. In this part, we will be highlighting few of the prominent classifications. Bentham and Hooker, they classified this Amaranthesi family under the class Dicotyledons, subclass Monoclamidae, series Curvy Embry, and the order Caryophyllales. Then, an American taxonomist, Arthur Cronkist, classified it at the rank of Dugen, Magnoliophyta, class Magnoliopsida, subclass Caryophyllidae, and the order Caryophyllales. Arman Taktajan, he classified this Amaranthesi family at the rank of Dugen, Magnoliophyta, class Magnoliopsida, subclass Caryophyllidae, but he incorporated one more taxonomic rank by superorder. He gave it the rank superorder Caryophyllini. And again, the order as the previous two classifications, Caryophyllales. Dahl Green gave a classification wherein he placed this Amaranthesi family under the class Magnoliopsida, subclass Magnolidae, superorder. Caryophyllini and the order Caryophyllates. Robert Thorne, he also gave a classification wherein Amaranthesi is classified under the class Angiospermy, subclass Caryophyllidae, superorder Caryophyllini and the order again Caryophyllates. Angiosperm phylogeny group, they also have proposed a classification for Angiospermus wherein this family Amaranthesi is placed under the clade core eudicots and the order is obviously the caryophyllates. Very recently the circumscription of this family Amaranthesi it has gone major changes. Now the Amaranthesi is defined in a much broader sense what in taxonomy we call it as sensolato because 
we have now included many closely related taxa that were previously recognized under a separate family Chenopodiaceae. Chenopodiaceae is commonly known as goose foot family. In other words, Amaranthaceae now includes also the taxa that were previously classified under a separate family Chenopodiaceae. Traditionally, the Amaranthaceae, but in a strict sense, senso stricto, it was separated from Chenopodiaceae on the basis of many characters. Some of the diagnostic characters were pink or red and dry to papery tuples in the Amaranthaceae, while as in Chenopodiaceae, we have green and membranous to fleshy tuples, and also in Chenopodiaceae, we have distinct stamens. Such a separation of Amaranthaceae but senso stricto and Chenopodiaceae seems to be now arbitrary, and that is why it results in a paraphyletic Chenopodiaceae. As we know, paraphyly is not considered as the group in phylogenetic classifications, that is why they have been grouped together under a single family Amaranthaceae but in senso lato sense. Such a separation of Amaranthaceae senso stricto and chenopodiaceae seems to be artificial and that is why it has resulted in a paraphyletic arrangement. However, recently with the inclusion of chenopodiaceae, the monophyly of amaranthaceae is strongly supported both by morphology and molecular evidences. Some of these molecular evidences have been gained from characters like chloroplast DNA restriction sites, RBCL sequences, ORF, 2280 sequences. The genera by the name of Polynemum and Nitrophila. These two genera were traditionally included under the family Chenopodiaceae. These two genera are now believed to be sister, that means close to the all other members of the Amaranthaceae, but in senso lato sense. The remaining members fall into two large clades corresponding to the traditional Amaranthaceae and Chenopodiaceae. Currently, the subfamily and tribal classification of Amaranthaceae mostly uses these characters like ovule number, embryo shape, number of anther locules, pollen structure, and parient form. Genera such as Slosia, Alternanthera. Achyranthus, Gompirena, Amaranthus and their relatives, they form a natural clade as these genera possess papery tuples and bracteoles and they also have monoadelphous stamens. Within this larger clade, the genera such as Alternanthera and Gompirena, they constitute a subclade due to their unilocular anthers. Other genera such as Atriplex, Chenopodium, Cochia, Celsola, Beta, and Spanacea, they have often fleshy tuples or brackets, and also they have distinct stamens, and thus it forms a separate natural clade. At present, Amaranthaceae sensolato is divided into 10 different subfamilies. These subfamilies include number 1 Amaranthoidae, exemplified by common genera like Acaranthus, Amaranthus, Bosia, Silosia, etc. The second subfamily is Gompirinoidae, characteristically exemplified by genera like Alternanthera, Gompirina, and Ericene. The third subfamily is Betoidae. It is exemplified by genera like Beta and Oreo Niton. The fourth subfamily is Camphorosmoidae. The examples are Pacea, Disocarpus, and Camphorosma. The fifth subfamily is Chenopoidoidae. Examples are Atriplex, Chenopodium. Spanacea, etc. The sixth subfamily is Corispermoidae. It is exemplified by genera like 
कोरिस्पर्मम एंड एग्रियोफाइलम द सेवेंथ सब फैमिली इज पोलिनीमोइडी द एग्जाम्पल्स और हेमिक्रोवा नाइट्रोफिला एंड पोलिनीमम The eighth subfamily is Salicornoidae. Examples in the subfamily are Halopeplia, Halostachys, and Salicornia. The ninth subfamily is Salicoloidae. It is exemplified by genera like Salicola and Halocharis. Tenth subfamily and the last one is Sauroidae. It is exemplified by Sauroda and by inertia at present the family is represented by about 170 genera that are distributed within 2400 species some of the species rich genera in this family are atriplex having 250 species all over the world then followed by gomperina and salsola having 120 species each these are followed by oldernanthera chinopodium tilotus soeda each having 100 species then ericene having 80 species followed by amaranthus with 70 species and lastly the celosia with about 50 species members of this family they show a worldwide distribution they are distributed from tropics To the cool temperate regions, these are especially common in disturbed, arid, and saline habitats. While as the members belonging to the Amaranthaceae but strict sensu stricto, they are predominantly tropical. But those members previously recognized under the family Chinopodiaceae, they are dominant in the regions like dry and warm temperate regions of the world. Many species of Amaranthaceae they are halophytes. that means they tolerate salty soils and grow in dry steppes and semi deserts the members of amaranthaceae they are of great economic importance some of these uses are for example the leaves and roots of many species such as common name is beet we have a species by the name of beet scientific name beta vulgaris spinach the scientific name spinacea oleracea or even the goose foot chinopodium and the pigweed the amaranthus they are eaten all these species they are eaten as vegetables the seeds of many species like chinopodium and amaranthus they are used to make flour some species of alternanthera and till anthera they are grown as hedge plants in our gardens and parks many species in this family they are used as ornamentals common ornamentals for example coxcomb celosia amaranth amaranthus globe amaranth scientifically known as gomprina or even the blood leaf scientific name is ericene some species by the name of dispania ambrosoides or the dispania antithymintica they are used as medicinal herbs some of the species in this family they are notorious weeds throughout the world some of these weed species are alligator weed its scientific name is oldernanthera philozeroides or even the weed like spiny amaranth scientific name amaranthus spinosus or even the goose foot chinopodium album or even the prickly chaff flower the scientific name acaranthus aspira these are some of the noxious weeds in this family